my anxiety is <laughs> on 10 today. Oh, my God. So that'll make for a great show. <laughs> Let's see if I get the date right. Today is Thursday, October 7th, 2021. Nice. <laughs> Did I do it? This is yes. the producer's happy hour. Two producers on opposite coasts chatting over drinks about what it means to be a good producer. I'm Lawrence Lewis in Los Angeles. And I'm Sister Christian in New York City. And today we're chatting about the Yes IA membership voted almost unanimously I mean, getting 60,000 people to do the same thing. Oh, I my no, God. I know. Uh, it's mind-blowing. Like, very close to unanimous for yeah. strike authorization. Right. So, um, you know, we want to hear from you. We see all the posts on, on, on social media. It's very exciting. But please join the conversation at Producers Happy Hour uh, group.com or email us at Producers Happy Hour at gmail.com. Send us your thoughts, your questions, your gripes, uh, your complaints, your ideas, <laughs> anything you want. Yeah, how would you change the world? How would you change the world? <laughs> I'm, hmm, I know how I would if they just put me in charge. Seriously. And don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts because it really helps other people like, you know, your second cousin find the show <laughs> who, uh, or who are interested in understanding what it takes currently to be a producer. And if you have any questions for us, join us for office hours. We believe in mentorship and sharing information in this business. So if yes. you are new to the industry or stuck somewhere in your career, need some advice, hit us up. Same email, producershappyhour at gmail.com and let us know you would like to have office hours. All right, Christian, what are you drinking on this fine day? As all y'all know, I've been in L.A. and New York. Like I've been back and forth so much yeah. that um, the beginning for the first time four weeks ago, Pinball season started back up. <gasps> oh, in exciting. person pinball, right? No way. And so I was gone for the first three matches, and this past Tuesday was the first time that I personally have been in a bar setting. I right. still wear my mask. Yep. I think, and it was very interesting that all the ladies that were there wore masks. <laughs> not, not so much <laughs> the men's. I don't, it was very interesting, and um, but I overdrank mm. on Tuesday night. Yeah. <sighs> oh. Uh, like to the point where I was like, "You girl, you're not this young anymore. I don't know what you're doing. You're not this young, so, and you're out of practice, oh, right? I mean, like, so out of practice, like talking going, to people, like it was so going awkward. to a bar and doing that whole talking to people yeah. that I knew but I hadn't seen in a year, almost two years. A lot yeah. of them, two years, I haven't yeah. seen them, and I was just like, okay, so I'm not drinking anything because okay. I smell." <laughs> <laughs> because that, I mean, I'm still feeling it. I don't know. Well, well, uh, hydrate. Maybe have some green tea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, if so. oh my god! I think I woke up thinking that if somebody mentions green tea to me today, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to me. I literally said to Sasha this morning, like, here's a cup of dirt. I don't here's even know why it came up, but I just. <laughs> Like every fucking oh, I love green tea. director I know. I know. I know. But uh, yeah, I can't, some of it can be. Maybe I just like haven't dirt. had it good yet. Maybe. That's true. Okay. Uh, well, I am drinking this uh, La Nina Margarita, <gasps> which is a, a little pre packaged. Oh, yes. Bottle. Those are my Have favorite. Have you seen these? Really? They're Barman. Cool. Oh, I yeah, drink those wand all the time. Wandering yeah. Barman. They're pre mixed. Mm. They come in a little glass flask oh, yeah. with a beautiful label. Uh, with some really pretty artwork, and it's um, yeah. it's uh, it's got like eight flavors and, too. Yeah, uh, La Nina Margarita. Look for it at your uh, bougie liquor store. Yes, and it's they're. Delicious. I mean, it is a perfectly mixed cocktail, and it's hard to find those. It sure is. All right, so Christian, how are you doing this week? I. It's. It, I have a lot of anxiety. Um, I have a lot a large workload. Yeah. That um, shifted. In the mm. last four days to something very exciting and big and all, you know, like dream come true type stuff. And the weight of that is pretty heavy right now of mm. anticipating unexpected expectations. Oh. And I know that that sounds, I mean, like I'm working with a, a new set of people that I've, you know, had a few months to learn and I'm still in the middle of figuring out how to understand what yeah. they're asking. Right. Versus going in like a, you know, I'm just, I'm not, I can be a bulldog, but I'm not in the sense of like, I just like to learn how you, how you work. That way yeah. we can work 
together um, because I can morph into anything that's, but if I don't have clear expectations, like we've talked about a gazillion times, managing client expectations Uh, are, is the biggest part of our job. Yep. And um, yeah, like just, just um, trying to set boundaries and explain things that are agreed to. And then it, it just, it's been a, it's been a navigating a minefield. Yeah, that is a big part of it. Like I really wanted and I should have minored in psychology. I, I, I took a bunch of psychology classes, but it was a, such a such a far away goal. I, I didn't I didn't do it. I was already working on set. But yeah, it, we have to kind of psychoanalyze people, understand how they operate so you can operate mm-hmm. within and their I've, psyche, within their wheelhouse. I mean, I consider myself fucking brilliant at doing that. And yeah. so this has been, um, but with time and workload, it just, yeah. yeah. And so it's given me some anxiety and a little bit of, you know, I've been staying up late and, you know, working and um, my sleep pattern is off. Um, and mm, I have a, I have something to share. Oh, please. I have been now turned down by two different therapists. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh my um, God. If we, <laughs> I know, like that sounds like a brag because it totally fucking is a brag. I have to oh tell you. Oh my God. I know, I know. And so um, the reason, and I'm going to be completely frank right now, the reason is, is that both have suggested in different ways that I know what to do <gasps> and I know what's wrong and that. I am beyond the help that they can give and I need something else like a life coach because I know what to do. I'm just not doing it. And I was like, ugh, Uh, don't fucking come at me with a life coach. (laughs) uh, And so I had, so one of them suggested, one of them suggested, I said, okay, I can, I will consider a life coach if, if they're a woman Mm -hmm. and they are a fucking badass bitch like me. Yeah. I want somebody who can take it as much as they can give it. But is on it brutally honest. So after saying this to both separate mm-hmm. people, they are working on who that person can be. Oh, oh <laughs> we're good. gonna see what oh, we're gonna good. see what happens. I'm willing to pay some money to see what the fuck this is gonna be. Oh my god! But I get it. Like I mean, I understand. I'm pretty well rounded, and I was in crisis like probably in July. I remember crying. I mean, yes, yeah. and I've come down the other side of that, and I I do understand what needs to happen. Um, but you, they're completely right. I am not doing it. And the last mm-hmm. thing that they, they say the both of a, they, they both said that the last thing that they want to do is to, during this time in my career, dig deep into some past shit that doesn't need to be, it's right. just not the, right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there was yeah, a yeah. lot of good points to it, but I was just like, Ooh, Lawrence, oh, Lawrence, turned down. <laughs> I'm beyond therapy. Juicy. I'm not, <laughs> you're not, no, but I'm beyond their capability. Which was very honest, I thought, and very like it was nice to not go through two months and well, be like, "Oh, you can't help me." This lines up with this book I'm reading. I, you know, talking about being in crisis. I was in crisis. Oh, you, you have time to read? Oh, that's, barely. That's a brag. In barely, and of barely, barely. <laughs> I haven't even finished it, and it's like you know, two hundred pages. It's nothing. Um, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a newspaper. Well, it got to the exercises, and I haven't had time to do the exercises. That's the problem. Oh. But I was in crisis like you last November mm-hmm. and again, probably mm-hmm. February, March, where I was just paralyzed with anxiety. And it was funny. That's why I started reading this book. And it said that this this one author's opinion is mm-hmm. that digging up past <laughs> traumas or whatever happened to you in your childhood or whatever happened to you at, at, in your career along the way is pointless. Just like just oh, like yeah. what they said, uh, you know, it's you just got to you just got to fix it. You just got to make changes now. And um, and it gave it gave a lot of great information and advice. But I was turned down by several therapists, not because I got a chance to talk to them, but because they were weren't taking on too new busy. clients. They were too busy mm-hmm. and or they didn't take, you know, and I'm trying to find someone that takes my insurance. That's a nightmare. Then, you know, in the middle of my anxiety crisis, there was one therapist that was like, yeah, I've got Saturday available if you want to do it. I'm like, okay, well, I'm trying to find somebody that takes my insurance. Let me just call around first. Uh, and if I, if I want to move forward with you, I'll, I'll get back to you. Like we do with putting crew on hold and everything all day long. And then all of a sudden, like at three days before the supposed appointment that I did not make, she sends me all the paperwork and like, here's where you pay the, on the credit Ooh. card. I'll talk to you on Sunday. Here's the Zoom link. And that just sent me. Yeah. 
for like, oh my God, I did not set this up with you. I do not owe you money. We do not have a session. So that just sent me into a anxiety spiral. So yeah, looking for an anxiety therapist sent me through many anxiety journeys. Well, isn't was it funny how um, our perception of how we, like our jobs and what we do is not normal to anybody else. And that's oh, yeah. coming true with all these. I, I mean, like none of this is normal, <laughs> but we're just like, normal. this is how it goes. And I was like, no, people do not do this. People with 40 hour a week do not yeah. do this. And somebody on IA stories posted uh, this uh, uh, a screenshot of an article about 40. The 40 hour work week is too much. We need to reinvent the 40 hour work week. I and, that. Said, and I was like, yeah, could I know. you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like I would do like, you know, I held so many jobs before this. And I once had a job that was like two double shifts on Saturday and Sunday and a, and a single shift on either Friday or Monday, just depend. And that was all I did. Yeah, it was great. Two 16 hour Amazing. days and then one eight. And I was just like, I'm rolling Culver here. <laughs> yeah. It, um, it was, it was great in that sense because I had four or five days, you know, like literally that much time off, but also to those hours are nuts until, yeah. but there's nothing compared to what all day, like we're all day. Oh my God. All night. Yeah. Uh, I remember saying that, you know, my day rate as a producer, the assumption comes that I'm available basically 24 hours a day. <sighs> I know. And it's true. And, like, it's true. And I, yeah. yeah. And I've been, yeah, I've been setting those boundaries, which have been hard. It's hard. Yeah. We should do a whole podcast on day rates because uh, they're going <laughs> up 1300, 750, 550. Get used yeah, to no, it. Yeah, no, no, they should. I mean, at least at the very least, um, 700 should be bid for. At the um, very keys. least, 700. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And, P and production, of course. But that's a whole nother topic. That's actually a good topic. We'll we'll talk about that on the yeah, next one. Yeah, next time, folks. Tune in. Next time. Little teaser. Um, I've been I've been busy working I keep saying I'm gonna take this month off. It hasn't happened yet. No, I'll let you, you know when it does. I took a job. <laughs> um but I found out this morning, very sad news. Uh, a first AD. I only worked with him once. I'm not gonna pretend that we were close friends. But uh, Chad Rosen, DGA first AD, passed away. He works in, in features. Um uh, he was in what? Bulgaria shooting a film and apparently uh, died overnight in his hotel room. Very, very sad. I wow. connected with him more on Facebook after the film I did with him. Mm -hmm. We found out, you know, we just had a lot of similar music interests, similar things, and, and, and kind of uh, saw that he's a very well-loved guy in the film industry, film community. Uh, so a, a lot of sadness around this today. So here's to Chad Rosen. If anybody knows him, please feel free to reach out and uh, send, uh, send us a note and let us know yes, about him. Please. Yeah. But the big news of the week is this uh, strike authorization vote. Let's talk about it. Okay. Dream come true. I, I, I see you nodding. As um, I've always thought um, since the moment I started doing union jobs, union jobs give a set of or commercial wise, let's just, yeah. let me, let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Way. Give a set of rules yeah. that you follow. And a lot of times the non-union world does adhere, like they, the rates mm -hmm. are comparable. Oh, yeah. The rules are comparable. Follow meal the same rules. All that shit. Yeah. yeah. We should say we're probably the exception to that. I hear about a lot of non-union jobs that don't follow any of those rules. So, uh. Oh yeah. I mean, but I remember like taking my, the commercial union rules and applying them. Oh, me too. All the time. To, yeah, exactly. To the non-union jobs. Yeah. And that's kind of how, I mean, like, that's how, you know, shout out to Tara Dolak, you know, that's how a lot of people who I work, I've worked with over the years continued to do as well. Just, you yeah. know, like the court, <laughs> there's amazing coordinators who became amazing producers yes. um, that I've worked with. Uh, definitely also follow a very strict set of guidelines, which is treating people like they're humans. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So this to me is exciting in the sense that I had a big eye opener a few months ago because being from commercials and content, I had never seen the new media contract for TV, the streaming stuff. Mm -hmm. And when I did see it, I was like, holy shit. Yep. Nobody can. I mean, like, I, I've never paid those rates to somebody. No. I happen to have a copy of the videotape scale new media contract mm -hmm. rates right here okay so let's hear it what i found interesting was that for eight hours 
um, minimum call local 600 video directors of photography get for eight hours four hundred and seventy nine dollars wow wow uh-huh hourly is 60 bucks an hour so i mean you know as a whatever i'm just i'm not going to even as if yeah so 60 bucks an hour an 18 percent, an 18 percent increase is an extra 10 bucks uh-huh mm -hmm. and then um when it comes to like say local 44 property the thirds are at 307 for eight hours wow this is scale i know it's yeah. fucking insane right and that's all for eight. So we, we know that a lot of these jobs will go for 12 hour days, but still, okay. A digital utility person looks like the lowest paid at 280 for eight. Wow. What's I the know. hourly on that? That's like 35. Does that math compute? It should, it should. 280. Yeah. Yeah. It, okay. yeah. I'm on my calculator. Yeah. I'm not a math brain. I'm on my calculator. <laughs> You have a calculator. 280 times uh, 18 is... Uh, <laughs> let me take off my shoes. Yeah. Here we go. 50 bucks more. Um, so it's... it's um They're low, obviously. They're low, and new media is not new media. New media is media now. It is broadcast now. This started when um, streaming services, they're not real movie studios, quote unquote. That shit changed through the pandemic. Like every, oh, I don't know of anybody who doesn't have like four or five different streaming services. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it changed, it changed a long time ago. I mean, this was created when, when it was, uh, you know, you, you, I don't know, you had to download it from some weird, weird website or you watch something on YouTube. <laughs> Are you talking that about was LimeWire? New, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was new media. It's not new media. It is the standard. And that that's where we're at, guys. It's the standard. And it's uh, it's too low. I mean, the fact that there's two different contracts for movies or new media, yeah. but they're doing the same thing. Mm -mm. It's in TV. Like, it's just like, no, just I would say get rid of that contract and go to the because these are billion dollar multiple in, billion I mean, dollar billion companies. dollar yeah. companies, multiple companies. Yeah. Billion dollars. Yeah. It's this insane. And again, yeah. I understand that we're waffle eaters over here in commercial land, but um, you can absolutely do in reading the stories. I completely agree with adding a week of shooting is probably uh -huh. less than all the meal penalties you pay. <laughs> Could be. No, it's definitely not. But I mean, we saw this morning or I saw this morning that there's a there's a very famous show out there that never broke for <gasps> lunch for two oh. fucking years. Oh, oh, in that case. Yeah. Yes. I didn't like, know it was that. I mean, yes. And so Serious, those yeah. I mean, right. Just to be available for the lead actor who wanted oh, yeah. to. Uh -huh. Yeah. I've heard so, this. OK. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was talking to a friend this morning, a DP who is like. I'm up for a show that has promised no weekends and will break for lunch. And I was like, oh, they're trying to placate. The <laughs> they're trying to get ahead and hopefully I'm mm -hmm. trying, but which is great. I mean, great. But the fact that you have to promise a meal. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. And so um, I just think that this will hopefully it won't be like phbp and cobros where um, they're like, oh, OK, so fine. We can't. We'll have to break you for lunch. Fine. Then nothing else changes. Right. You know what I mean? Like one thing's given up and then boom, that's that's everything. I really hope that this turns into the change that we think it could, which yeah. will tri the effects will trickle into the non-union world. It will. Yeah, it will. And I hope, you know, and obviously it will be better days for production, <laughs> better days for production and better days for crew. And I and obviously we we would hope that, you know, obviously this strike is against the AMPTP, the TV film oh, contract, yeah, the right, the user mm -hmm. basic basic agreement and the new media contract. We would hope and traditionally what happens is those alterations that happen to those contracts trickle down to commercials. Yes. And that's what I do hope happens. Right. I remember when local 600 East added their meal penalties at the fifth meal penalty. It became triple time every half hour. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that deterred a lot of shit. I it did. Say. It did. It was like a real like we were breaking after like we would never get to <laughs> yeah. that meal penalty no. because everybody understood what it meant. It meant that the meal penalties would go from like maybe fifteen hundred dollars to five grand. You know, it was insane what would happen. Exactly. The media. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hoping that this really does spark some change. 
I've been hearing tale of a lot of jobs that are postponing or pushing or canceling because and, and on the commercial side because, out of fear of, of a strike, which is right. mind baffling, mind blowing to me. Yeah, because yeah. there's still a lot that has to happen between now and then just because the strike authorization vote passed doesn't mean we're immediately striking. I no. say we, I'm not an IATSE member, but I stand in solidarity. And so what does it mean? A strike authorization. So this is all from the IATSE website. They have a strike FAQ. I'll put the link in the show notes. Yeah. But what does it mean? A strike authorization vote would give the international president, Matthew Loeb, the authority to call a strike if deemed necessary. But it does not mean we'll strike right away. And the specific question on the ballot uh, was, do you authorize the IOTC president to call a strike against the producers covered by the basic area standards agreement? Yes or no. So that just means we have more negotiating power. And that's what's happening is that the AMPTP, this is from The Hollywood Reporter, asked to return to the bargaining table and indicated they would present a new <laughs> offer. Because after you, they said, sorry, we're not looking at anything. After they now said, yeah. That, yeah. So, well, yeah. No, it's all tactics for sure. It's, it's all, all tactics. Semantics. I was talking yeah. to a friend of mine who she just passed the bar. She's been in court a few times. She's just kind of entering this mm. legal process as a, as a young lawyer. And she was in some uh, collective bargaining agreement discussions. And she did say it's so much theater. It's so yeah. positioning and like who has the more, most power and the the way it all kind of works and unfolds is uh, very theatrical. And just like we're saying with this, it's all positioning. It's all it's all posturing. But, um, you know, the AMP after the vote drama and the tr- entertainment tr- industry. Oh, no figure. <laughs> so after the after the vote came out on Monday. The AMPTP gave this kind of real weak little statement saying the (laughs) the AMPTP remains committed to reaching an agreement that will keep the industry working. And here's my commentary is like, here's the the power of capitalism at all costs. We must keep working. Right. No, it's not all costs anymore. We've been through a, a year of not working or six months of not working. And we understand the power that we have as laborers, essentially. Yeah. Out of entertainment, people had a lot of time off, a lot Mm. more time off. And there's still millions of jobs available Yeah, because people are not willing to go back to what we were doing for the amount of money that we were paid. Exactly. It's like, fuck it. I mean, and I I know it's so trendy now to say normalization, um, (sighs) but I can't, I know, I know, please. It's not normalized normalization. I know, like somebody, please stop me. But, <laughs> and mm. we've been talking about this between you and I for so long and then on this podcast for so long yeah. about how it just, the shit awards and the, you know, like how proud we were, how proud and the badge of honors that we wear to do mm-hmm. inconceivable mm-hmm. things to anybody outside the industry is not a brag. No. And we've been we've been making it a brag for so long that it's hard to take a step back. And I think that this is the step back. There was a great post that that exemplifies what you just said. And that was about the the writer of the Squid Game, which is oh, the, yeah. have you, uh, the <laughs> have hot you new show. Yet, <laughs> I have. I, I haven't. I've only seen the trailer. And then and then I saw so somebody. Watching it and I'm just like, oh, OK, OK, I'll get there. Yeah, we'll get it. We're going to watch it, probably watch it. But I saw somebody post on Instagram. They're like. Guys, you're buying into the hype. It's not that good of a show. <laughs> a controversial hot tip. But yeah, anyways. Uh, <laughs> hot tip. <laughs> controversial hot tip. Um, so the, the, the post basically was talking about how the writer of the show spent like 19 years writing and pitching and failing. And uh, he had to like sell the laptop he wrote the show on for 700 bucks so he could eat and pay his bills and then mm-hmm. finally he That's got his shot and again it's the shit awards it's like look how i mean you just got to keep going and it, it turned it into some <laughs> sort of like you know motivational <laughs> yeah. um uh, uh, uh look it only nugget. took him 10 years <laughs> exactly but people are like no this actually shows how racist Dedication and how and yeah and how how uh shitty this business is yes Mm-hmm. Or can be, because, or can be, because there are good parts of it. To that point, you know, uh, last year, the, such a surge of, um, hey, is there any black directors that you know, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. Um, female this and um, BIPOC that? And it just, it was a scramble. 
yeah. to look like you were doing something. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why I, a year and a half later, like, you know, I'm still talking to, you know, people who all of a sudden got popular who have been very good. They just happen to not, not be white male. And they're just like, I get put up for so much stuff because I'm the one non-white male in the group. And yeah. I'm constantly, but I'm constantly not. It's as if I'm being shown, <laughs> but I never get chosen. Uh. I know. And so that's exactly what you're talking about. It's like the recognition finally is here. Yeah. I'm not saying that um, the only reason why um, this show was chosen was because it was made by a non-white male. <laughs> I am saying that the opportunity for a mm -hmm. work to get looked at is um, there. Exactly. Now, when yeah. it wasn't before. So exactly. to your point of racism yeah, yeah. in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's real. So uh, to finish up with the AMPTP, because this mm -hmm. is this is kind of interesting. They and you know one thing that I saw that I wanted to talk about is I saw the Union Post that what they were looking for in specifics. We know generally better working hours, less less overtime, protect mm -hmm. weekends, no Fridays. But I only saw <laughs> that they were asking for just to increase the turnaround to ten hours. From nine. And I thought, is that all that is being asked? I mean, in 2006, the fight was 12 on 12 off after we spoke about, you know, that documentary Haskell Wexler did where, where the AC died. And from that came this fight 12 on 12 off. They made badges. They wanted to work 12 hours on set, but have 12 hours off. And that got tampered down by the IOTC themselves. They weren't they weren't kind of fighting for that. And so now here we are in this fight again. But we're still only asking for 10 hours from what I understand. Yeah, could that's be wrong. 14 hours on. I mean, that's a ridiculous amount of time. It is. And 10 hours off is not, I mean, it's just, it's no life. It's no life. No. It's basically come home and sleep, if that. For five days. And then you recoup yeah. on the week. Like, if you can sleep, because a lot of the store, and if you are off on the weekends, because department heads. Yeah. Yeah. So the AMPTP said in a statement that uh, it has suggested meaningful, you know, they keep saying IOTC walked away from a, from a deal, which isn't totally true. The IOTC sent another package of a new deal mm -hmm. and they didn't even look at it. But they're saying that um, they have suggested meaningful improvements in rest periods. <laughs> Maybe that's how we got from nine to 10 hours. Don't know. For workers in first season television and post-production workers on series television pilots, films and distant locations. They also said that they have proposed a 10 to 19 percent increase in minimum rates for some of the union's lowest paid crafts. So basically, yeah. if it depends, I don't know what the minimum wage might be nationally. I still think it's only like twelve dollars or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, in California, I believe it's close to 15, but a lot like script. Right. Like a lot of people are making 18 an hour, maybe. Yeah, 18, business. I think, is, yeah, lowest. That's insane. For, yeah. So 10 to 19% increase. So if, if you're talking $15, a 10% increase is $1.50 an hour, just to be clear. 20% <laughs> would be $3 an hour, just to mm -hmm. be clear, to do the math for them, because 10 to 19%. Oh, but it adds up over the year, Oh, Lawrence. sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I used to tell myself when I worked at the mall. Oh, God. <laughs> so I'm telling you that this is not, we're not working at the mall. We're working for huge money-making corporations. Right. And before this fight kind of came to light, I just want to give my anxiety back to them. Yeah. Not, I don't want to own the anxiety because their budgets are, are underfunded and I have to figure out how to make it work. And then I have anxiety. No, 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 that's their anxiety. So I've been working on that myself. But uh, average of 18% for particular kinds of new media productions. And based on what those rates look like, 18% is still not enough. So I hope the fight continues. But, um, oh, look, I found this, this little thing in our little broadcast setup. Let's hear it for, uh, for the uh, strike authorization vote. <laughs> It's, it's not, I mean, it's not enough and it's too good. It is insane. I wonder, I do, I know you, I know you play this stinger, but I wonder, I, I mean, I'm sure this happens, but what's the difference between a real movie and a streaming movie? Because places like Disney plus versus if it shows there versus if it's Disney, like going to a theater, like I just, so that's I what feel it like is. this is a gray, a really gray area of 
what they can charge. Uh, well, there's there pay. is. I, I remember looking at the new media contract for something I did years ago, and there is stipulation about what that means, and it has to premiere on. It has to play on. It's like a like a theatrical window, except it's a digital window. It has to be on a digital platform for a certain amount of time. If it starts in the theater, you can't. That's not that's theatrical. You know, the um, Black Widow was supposed to go out and then they all of a sudden like double premiered it in uh-huh. the theater and not. And well, that because that messed with Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, yeah exactly. to mess with her points on the back end. Wouldn't be doing that to a man. Oh. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know it. I know it. You Let's all know it. it. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Well, Lawrence, Producers Happy Hour was created with the help of Christopher Daniels, who is a treatment designer, and he created our logo and branding. And Kyle Puccia, who is a music composer for commercials, film, and TV. He created this show music that you're listening to right now. This episode is edited by Eric Beals. Thanks for listening. We're back next week. Maybe. Maybe. If our our (laughs) schedules cooperate. Uh, Send us your voice recordings or your emails to producershappyhour at gmail.com. Lawrence, how do people reach you directly? Two ways. LawrenceTLewis.com for producing or for my voiceover work, voiceoflawrence.com. Christian, how about you? SisterChristianProduces.com. What about for uh, pinball? Oh, that's secret. <laughs> you got to, yeah. <laughs> you got to reach out for that. <laughs> that's private information. See you next week. Bye. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs>